Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and today I am sharing the quarter, the crisis, the, the quarter crisis, the quarter year. Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and today I am completing the quarter year crisis book tag. So this is one of the first times I've done a book tag. I think I've done like one other and I just thought it was good because I have recently posted my um, quarterly check-in on my yearly goals and so I thought I might as well do a quarterly check-in on my reading life. Um, and so here goes. Um, I will link down below the original uh, creator of the quarter year crisis book tag um, but then I also got the idea to do it from Krista from Books and Jams. So the first question is, how many books have I read this year? And I have read 32 books. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question. Have you already found a book you think might be a 2022 favorite? Yes, I found a few um, really good books that I can't keep out of my brain. So the first one is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Um, I read the first four volumes and can't get them out of my brain. Um, I read the new episodes that she comes out with every 1st, 11th, and 21st of the month, and I just am in love with Nick and Charlie, and I know that the Netflix series is coming out soon, and so I just can't wait to delve more into Nick and Charlie's life in the various ways um, that Heartstopper is coming out. Um, and then some other ones, um, The Most Fun We Ever Had by Claire Lombardo. That was just a really great multi-generational sweeping family saga. Um, just really good. I um, loved the character development in that one and just uh, really pulled on my heartstrings. Heartstopper, heartstrings. Um, and then another one that I think could be a favorite contender or in the top 10 whatever list um, is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. That one, again was just so um, touching and um, made me think about um, being a parent to my kids and children and their imaginative brains. And yeah, so those are the three that I think could be contenders so far. Next question is any one star books or least favorite books of the year so far? And yes, I have one one star read and that was Less by Andrew Sean Greer. Nothing against Andrew Sean Greer um, or his writing, but it was just not the story for me at the time that I read it and I just found it very slow paced and not one that I can get into. Um, okay, the next question is the most read genre so far. So um, I'm tied at the top with seven reads in each of these genres. So I have romance at seven reads and mystery or thriller at seven reads. Then at a close second is sci-fi or fantasy at six, which I don't read those books, but I'm trying to read them a little bit more. And so obviously it's showing that I've read six of them. It's my second most read genre. And then contemporary is at five. And then the the last few books are mixed between historical fiction, nonfiction, and short stories or novellas. Um, okay, we are on to question number five, a book that surprised me. So I have a book that surprised me in a good way and a book that surprised me in a bad way. So the first one that surprised me in a good way was Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Um, I went into it thinking, oh man, another sci-fi. What am I doing to myself? Why am I still reading sci-fi? Because I had come off of reading the fifth season and um, Binti, some sci-fi fantasies that I didn't enjoy as much. And I said, why am I reading this again? Why, why am I trying to do this? And this one surprised me in a good way just because of the format that it was written. I really enjoyed the story. Um, and it wanted me to keep reading, or it made me keep reading. So that was in a positive way um, that it surprised me. And then in a negative way that surprised me, it's actually this book right here, The People We Meet on Vacation. Um, I completed it in April, so it's not in any of my wrap-ups yet. But when I uh, post my April wrap-up, I'll talk a little bit more about why the People We Meet on Vacation disappointed me, surprisingly. Um, I thought it was going to be a five-star read. Everybody loved it, and it just didn't meet my expectations. So stay tuned for that. Uh, next question, a book that's come out in 2022 already that you want to read but haven't yet. There are two. Um, the first I just heard about this morning when I listened to um, 
Anne Bogle's podcast, What Should I Read Next? And it's called French Braid by Ann Tyler. Um, I've read a couple of Ann Tyler's um, and I liked one, didn't like the other. Um, but this one sounds like a great multi-generational family story. Um, and I love those. And she said it really um, digs deep into character development. And so um, I'm really excited for that one to read French Braid. Um, and then the other one is by Kate Quinn, The Diamond Eye, um, which is about a female sniper in World War II Germany, I believe. Um, and I just love Kate Quinn and her stories. And I love historical fiction and World War II historical fiction. So that one's probably going to be a winner for me. Okay, next question. One goal you made that you're succeeding at. So if you looked at my... Um, 22 for 2022 goals that I uploaded last week. Um, I'll link it up above for you, but um, I had four reading goals out of those 22 and one or a couple that I'm succeeding at. Um, the first was to read 70 books and I'm at 32 so far. So I am almost halfway there and we're only a quarter of the way into the year. So I'm doing really well at that goal. And then um, my another goal that I'm doing really well is um, keeping up on reading a title for the Buzzwordathon um, that Kayla puts on by books, or that Kayla puts on at Books of Mala. Um, I have read one book every month so far, and I have a plan to read one for the month of April and continue to do that uh, for the rest of the months in the year. Um, and then the next question is a goal that I maybe need to focus on a little bit more. And the goal uh, that I am not doing well at at all is to read Harry Potter 5 in French. Um, I have read a Harry Potter book in French every year for the last four years now. Um, it's just been a goal of mine to keep up on my French um, and I can understand it very well because I know the Harry Potter books and the story so well. Um, and so I made it a goal of mine instead of just read it really quick toward the end of the year to read 85 pages every month. And I think I've only read like 20 pages total and I should be well into the 200 pages at this point um, because it's a long book. Um, so I need to focus on that a little bit more and you guys should hold me accountable to that. So please do that. Okay, the last question is, are there any new to you booktubers, bookstagram, book talkers for 2022? Okay, I don't do book talk. I'm horrible at bookstagram. Um, so new booktubers, um, well, first of all, the person who... Um, I watched this video of and wanted to do it uh, because she inspired me. It was Krista from Books and Jams. Thank you, Krista. Um, and then, so I've been watching her videos and then all of the ladies that participated in Krista's Middle Grade March recommendations uh, video, I have been watching a few of their videos and getting to know them as um, booktubers. And another gal I have been watching is Kara from Kara's Bookshelf. Um, I found her very recently and she is a fellow Minnesotan and I enjoy her content so far. So that is the Court of Your Crisis book tag. Thank you so much for watching um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!